So what is laparoscopy? Also known as minimally invasive surgery or MIS. So if you look at sort of um, literature in the human medicine, you see this word MIS quite often. And it is quite a common procedure in human, as we know. And most people when they talk about keyhole surgery, they either have had it themselves or they know a friend or relative has done it themselves. So it's not a brand new science at all. But um, uh, as bad medicine goes, we are always about 10, 15 years behind human medicine, which is why we don't adopt it as quick. But there we go. It's also known as keyhole surgery. Okay. Thoracos uh, thoracoscopy <laughs> means using a similar sort of things, but into the chest. So a, a, a laparotomy or, or lap means tummy. Thoraco means chest. So laparoscopy means going into the tummy or going into the abdomen to be more exact. Whereas uh, thoracoscopy going into the chest. So same again, you can use uh, uh, minimally invasive techniques for that. So how is it performed? So very simply, we the abdomen is a potential space. Okay, if I were to put a camera in there right now, okay, I wouldn't see anything because the camera goes through in the intestines, liver. The fact that we can see each other is because of the distance between us. If there isn't a distance, there isn't a gap between us, we can't see each other at all, isn't it? If I come so close to you, right in front of you, you can't see. So there must be a gap between us. So the abdomen is a potential space. So what we need to do is fill it up with air, and the air that we choose is carbon dioxide, to fill it up so there's actually a space between the camera and the organ of interest. Does it make sense? Oh, yeah. put because if they don't, there's nothing to see. Literally, if you put a camera into something, you can't see it. All you see is the end of the camera. Yeah. So there must be a gap. So that's why they use a uh, we, we put gas inside there. And the reason and before they used to use like uh, why carbon dioxide then the, you were talking about maybe oxygen, you know. But uh, as we know oxygen is flammable. So if you're gonna use coagulating equipment, everything's explodes, so that's not good. So they use CO2, okay, because it is the least uh, dissolvable in blood as well. So to cause gas embolism, the risk is much lower. That's why they use CO2. Okay, then after they put in a camera port, okay, which we'll show you in a bit, um, and uh, what happens with that is that uh, that is a little port for us to put a camera inside there so we can see inside there. Okay, uh, it'll all come to light once I show you some uh, quick little video. Then instrument port. So camera is to see, instrument is to do things too. So that's why there's usually a two port technique, or at least a two port technique. Uh, sometimes there's a three port technique. There is a single port technique which is uh, doable, but it's quite tricky. It definitely specialized equipment, whereby from one port you can put a camera in and the instrument. But as you can imagine, it can be quite tricky. Yeah. Um, then after that, we perform the procedure. All instruments are removed and we close the port surgical size. So there's a very, very simple way of looking at it. So what's the advantage for it? So for the surgeon, um, it's improved magnification. So that it's actually um, everything is magnified, everything is bigger. Okay. Improved lighting. There's a light source straight to it compared to uh, if you are not doing keyhole, you're opening the belly up, then you can see all the intestines and it's just surgical light. And sometimes the rummage between the organs, the lighting isn't great, whereas this one is actually pointing to exactly where you want to see, which we'll demonstrate in a bit as well. Uh, more control actions possible. If you think about it, the ovaries are found beside the kidneys. When we do a bitch spay, a normal bitch spay, dog is along his back, we're opening over here which means that we have to rummage through all these organs to get to the bottom. It is quite a lot of organs to go through. The, the magnification isn't great, the visualization isn't great. It's not as though it's right on the surface, isn't it? Then we're trying to manipulate and breaking the ligament. It's all like, it's all inside there, so it's not easy to see. Whereas with keyhole surgery, as you can see, it just allows more control movement. Vastly reduce the size of surgical sites. So normal open surgery, we're talking about between 10 to 15 centimeters, depending on how long the uh, uh, how long the dog is uh, but also when we are talking about keyhole we're talking about two five millimeter holes so it's tiny it's very, very small for the pet incredible i use the word incredible recovery rate so 98 percent of uh, owners they report the next day as though nothing has happened that sort of recovery and we don't send them on pain relief as well because the owners keep returning back to me so i've not had a dog that needs pain relief at all and in fact the biggest problem that most owners have is actually to keep the dog still. Uh, as I mentioned, minimal use of uh, pay, uh, post op pain relief. For the pet carer, for pet owners like yourself, improve 
had Kara's satisfaction, you feel as though you, you don't feel too guilty about getting the dog spayed. Because, you know, sometimes they say, oh, there's another 10 days recovery and the dog is quite sore, long, sort of a surgical site. You know, we, we do sort of feel, it's like, oh, okay, I just put my pet through that. Whereas, if they see a very quick recovery, minimal surgical site, and you know the procedure has been done, uh, owners tend to be slightly happy. And in fact, for us, 100% of owners would recommend this particular technique compared to open space once they've had this procedure done. Improve peace of mind as well. The disadvantages of laparoscopy, increased cost, okay? So uh, the equipment costs money, the uh, uh, different expertise costs money, and uh, in fact, we, uh, we certainly would be charging a keo surgery or lap spay more than an open spay, and um, there is a, the, the cost, it's uh, what we charge, really doesn't cover the cost at all. So that's why not many practices provide it, because it is not really, really a money-making thing at all. In fact, we lose money doing that. So economically, it's not uh, great. Increased expertise, a lot of extra courses for that. This is quite interesting. So we see everything in two dimension rather than three dimension, because we're seeing from a flat screen on the TV, compared to seeing physically where we can gauge depth and things like that, okay? But that's just a little uh, sort of a disadvantage that we tend to get over quite easily. Um, lack of feel. So surgeons, when we go inside there, we feel organs. We, we sort of feel the tension, we feel how thick it is, we feel how smooth it is. Whereas with keyhole surgery, my fingers are not touching any of the organs at all. It's all just instruments. So let's talk about lack of feel, so to speak. Uh, limitations using ports. So the ports are 5mm, as I mentioned, and um, sometimes you get bigger ones at 1cm, but even then compared to, uh, say, if you if you want to do something complicated, like maybe removing a foreign body obstruction, things like that, um, there is these limitations because the ports are only that small. So there, uh, there are sort of various methods that we can adapt to it, uh, but certainly the size of the ports would be a limitation to what you can do inside there.